Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Disco Elysium. We are currently searching through the doomed commercial area looking for a ghost for the bookshop owner. But it is getting late and I think we've been told to go back to bed in the uh, in the whirling rags. As before, an iron safety curtain curves before your eyes. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. I'm going to knock on it just to see what happens. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Knock on it harder? Still nothing. No one's home. Okay, I'm going to leave. Uh, I believe there was an exit down here that I accidentally walked into. The, uh, can we use that to maybe find a way? I think it was through this door here. I'm not entirely sure what happens if we stay up too late. Um, could be interesting. Ooh, some drawers. Money. Damn it. Uh, money and magnesium. I'll take all of that. Thank you very much. Never say no. Uh, there's a giant bear. I'm gonna quick save this place. This place seems terrifying. I don't want to die. It's gonna be like climb inside of the furnace. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, colouring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Can I look inside the furnace? It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. Interesting. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm hallucinating, or maybe it's the entity. I hear the murderer of the hanged man talking. Let's go with this one. This is the less sure option. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? Maybe it's coming from behind those safety curtains we saw upstairs. Yell hello. Hello! <laughs> uh, these voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity. Oh, God. Let's not say that. I can smear my hands with coal. I don't see what that would achieve. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Do I want to do this? Hadramut Kazir, smear your cheeks with black coal. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> I'm the reincarnation of an ancient uh, Ilmarian warrior. Oh, let's just go with it. Please wipe your face clean, officer. Ah, oh, you know, it's worth a try. No, you're a proud warrior. Well, oh, oh, oh. I can, I can keep it if I want. <laughs> oh, let's try. You can feel your cheeks turn red under the lieutenant's gaze. You look like a kid, not a police officer. Even the war paint can't conceal the embarrassment. It was worth a try. Thank you. So, where were we? I'm going to kick it and see what happens. Ow. You feel something in your chest. Oh, for God's Not sake. Natural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm. Your jaw. Help. Yeah. Screaming isn't happening on account of extreme shortness of breath. You're just making it worse. Oh god, it's painful. Try to remain conscious? All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face. Like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. I just died by kicking a chimney. Crying out loud. 
Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who knew him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met. Captain Ptolemy Price, the deceased superior officer, commented. That ain't easy on the ticker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. But I think before he ever had a heart attack, his heart was broken. According to an official statement given by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. Damn it. Excuse me, I need to load that quick save. I'll be right back. Okay, I don't think we're going to bother with smearing my hands with coal. Let's leave. I wonder if that has opened up a possibility with knocking on the shutters upstairs. I just redid all the other. The options that were there. What is inside the bear? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Well, we have to open the door, don't we? A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's a fridge. Of course. Just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face, bathed in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Let's take a look inside. Let's look inside the refrigerator. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Let's take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Oh, I get to take the magnets with me as well. Let's go. Can I see what they are midway through this? No, I can't look in my inventory. Okay. Uh, let's examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. So they try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points to the red, snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Well, let's close the door. Can we follow these cables? They do appear to go over here. An ice cream maker, defrosted and unplugged. What's this over here? The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Oh. Well, hello. Can I go in? Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Wow. Is this a resistance shelter or something? Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Can I have them? A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Well, let's look. There's a hole in the wall. Shine a light on the hidden compartment. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Uh, would you like to do the honors? <laughs> sure. Okay, here's some more rifles. None of these seem to be working. And... No! His hand reaches in, rummaging in the dark. An old Belmagrave rifle. That's rare to find in such good order. Seems to no longer be functional, but still rare. 
Here. This should cheer you up. It's yours, officer. You found this place. Oh, well, thank you very much, Kim. That is very kind of you. What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. <laughs> yeah, let's leave. Right, so now we actually just have a gun, but it just doesn't work. There it is. A broken bell my grave from ages past. It's a four-shot bolt-action military rifle with a wooden frame. I do still need to read the book as well, but uh, we'll worry about that at some point when I feel like we have time. I need to try and get through this area before passing out or something. I don't know. I imagine something bad's going to happen if I uh, stay awake too long. What's this? Is this the generator? A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. There's a shelf. Can I loot said shelf? Oh, thank God. A Nussafed. That might save my life. <laughs> I really should get more health. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Did I unplug the giant red cable? An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Should I unplug the black cable too? Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? I don't know why I unplugged it. I do things without any reason. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. Let's leave. I wonder if this is going to be in somehow important. Can I now re-look inside of these things? No, but there is some stuff over here in an office. Oh, hello. An insane mesh tank top. Plus one drama. That would replace my shirt, right? Which increases my conceptualization, but I do like drama. Hey, I should be wearing the physical instrument, shouldn't I? Do I want to wear this? Oh, wow. Oh, that's a look. Oh, let's go. That is a, We are sticking with that. Intercom wires running into a breaker box. Okay, so there's some stairs here, but what's down here? Money. Hello. I see you, money. Is this a cave-in? A cellar window. People's feet shuffling by on the street. What's up these stairs over here, then? Oh, wait. Is, the fr is something in the fridge changed? Now I've unplugged it. Beer's eyes are dead and empty. Ice inside the fridge slowly melting. The power has been cut off. Hmm, okay, nothing new. Can't say oh so the only thing left I wanted to try was knocking on the door? Hmm. Let's see where this these stairs leave first. I wondered if we'd have any sort of extra thing now we know somebody's actually in the room behind the shutters. Interesting! It's put us by the whirling in rags. Okay, uh, let's see if we can rest, I guess. The gardener's still just sitting here at, t at half ten. Um, this is a bit weird, isn't it? Let's talk to some people. Hello again, sweetie. I see you've met up with your colleague. He looks at the lieutenant. The lieutenant nods politely. Wait, who's... Sweetie, she is appraising you scientifically, the way she would an exceptional zoological specimen. It's not like that. <laughs> Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. I'm no sweetie, look at me. You're a handsome man, officer, with your moustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. <laughs> dimple or not, I'm a bitter man. The years have taken their toll. Uh, no, I was going to say thanks. I appreciate it. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. She slaps herself on the forehead. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, 
smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. We can, we can hire her. <laughs> you seem to be in a chair. Oh, what a lovely way to do it. How do you like to roll with me? Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Well, let's say this. Are you okay? I'm very sorry. I crashed into you earlier. I don't know what got into me. Oh, oh I'm perfectly all right. I'm more worried about you. What was that? What was that? The cafeteria manager is a bad man. A man without honor or compassion. Uh, it was like my body had a will of its own. I was running, my torso turned, my hands made this lewd gesture. I'm sorry you had to witness it. Don't beat yourself up over it too much, dear. People do strange things when the old fight or flight kicks in. I'm just glad you weren't injured. Sweetie needs money, does sweeties get money? Oh my god, I can't say any of these. Uh, you seem to be in a chair? Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height, or a grenade explosion. Let's go with this one. I'm sorry it was rude of me to mention the wheelchair. Let's move That's on. That's quite all right. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. There is no bitterness in her voice. She accepted the curiosity her condition inspires a long time ago. How'd you like to roll with me? Let's go. Whatever do you mean? I want you to be my wheelchaired partner in fighting crime, helping people catching sequence killer. Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner who needs you to get back to helping the people of Martinez. Kim, of course, I forgot I had you. Uh, I know, I know, but there's also side mystery, sequence killers and forays into the paranatural. You're probably right, Kim. It seems to me that you lucked out with your partner. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law. Someone you can lean on, and sweetie, you are looking unsteady. Oh boy. Okay, well I've got to get going now. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. Okay, who in here can I talk to? I can talk to this man down here. I don't know who he is. He looks shifty and decidedly bold. That Wait. sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Not now. Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust for sweet syrupy rum and lemonade? With a twist of lemon? Maybe lime. Maybe who cares? Just rum. Maybe I should lick it before I go. Get that. Get out of here. God damn it. Animal. <laughs> All about money, you know? Oh, you gotta spend money to make money? Okay, so I can't talk to this guy. Uh, I can't talk to any of these people. They're just having the time of their life. Can I sing at the karaoke? I don't think I can. Who's the guy at the bar? Okay, can't talk to them either. This is still closed. Let's speak to the, the cafeteria manager. Our best friend. Can I help you? Uh, so about that money I owe. Yes, have you got it? I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I'll pay you back tomorrow. I'm an honest cop. I'm a little far away from paying him back. Uh, it's cold out. I'll freeze to death because I'm losing the stupid money game. Oh, Kim is about to say something. Let him. We're going to let Kim sort this out. I understand your predicament as the manager. However... He adjusts his glasses. I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking, and... He stops mid-sentence. He shrinks back a bit under the lieutenant's severe gaze. I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. Hold on, I still have my key, you know? No, I'm not gonna say that. This conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay, I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. Damn it. Kim, I need you to bail me out, buddy. I'm really sorry. I have no money. I'm a poor man. I haven't even spent it on booze. I spent it on a book. 
<laughs> I think paying in installments is definitely the best option. I'm assuming my mission that I got given there is to go to the... Kim is off to help go to his motor carriage in front of the wedding? Yeah, okay. Sorry, Kim. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Oh, I thought you'd have the cash. I didn't think we were just going to be straight up selling something. Transport enclosure. Regular people just call it the cage. Oh, let's look in the suspect's transport enclosure. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. Oh, damn it, I still haven't found the pawn shop. Uh, what are those things? They are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. A vanity he wouldn't mind. Ah, oh, what do you mean you confiscated them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official son, and hi. So you took his spinners? <laughs> mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. Um, I get it. I would have confiscated them too. They're mesmerizing. That they are. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. Did you want to put these spinners on... Your machine? No, no, that that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. Outrageously cool. He flashes a smile, barely visible in the dark. I'm sorry you have to sell them because of me? Or should I just say nothing? Let's say nothing. The spinners shine so bright they reflect on the lieutenant's glasses. He doesn't say anything either. Oh, I feel really bad taking this man's spinners. But I also need the money. You said something about a pawn shop? Yes, there's one 100 meters south of here. I think it's called Roy's Nest or something. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open late. Items that can be pawned at Bird's Nest Roy's appear in your inventory under the items tab. You can pawn these items when talking to Roy. I am genuinely torn here, but you know what? Let's take the spinners. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. I think he understands. He wouldn't have he wouldn't have put it forward if he didn't. I don't think he actually has a use for them, he just likes them. Let's go see if we can find the pawn shop. The magnificent hubcap spinners that Lieutenant Kitsuragi has donated to you so that you can pay for your room at the whirling. They are slate blue and shimmer hauntingly in the light. We head to the south. Let's see if we can find this pawn shop. An ancient fountain that doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Okay, that could come in useful. Is that a... What a... Air rises from the sewer. Oh, lovely. Does that mean at some point I'm going to have to go into the sewers? This has reminded me that I keep meaning to turn down the music. It is very loud. Turn it down a little bit. There we go. That, and I keep getting copyright struck for the music. <laughs> it's mildly irritating, I will admit. Uh, hello, is there, is there a pawn shop around here? Is this the pawn shop? Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast cash for faster times. Let's go. I just read that I can buy thought slots with points. I can. Interesting. That might be worthwhile doing at some point. Alright, well, what's in here then? Where is Roy? There he is. Let's look around a bit first. Some kind of machine. An antique cash register. A bust of a woman. The plaque simply says, Day. 
In the dark, a film projector is whirring away. I love the music in this shop. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. I'm so happy I can hear a, a film projector whirring away in the background here. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Hmm, win her back? Who? Yes. Buy something nice. A figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. Yeah, let's step away from the table. Let's just do what we're here to do for now. Uh, I don't trust that. What is that? Is that a military jacket? I like it. Mostly military wear, with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. That probably explains why I like it. Hello, Roy. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? He asks. His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately, RCM or otherwise. This guy definitely sounds like a mass murderer. I don't know what it is, but... Hmm. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Hmm, quite the collection. I may have something to add to it. It keeps me entertained. Uh, challenging a 12? Is Roy high? If yes, then what is he on? Uh, by the way, do you um, happen to have any guns, like the ones carried by cops? Oh, I never thought about that, did I? Uh, there's something I'd like to sell. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. The left hand steps in and hands him the spinners. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. The lieutenant explains as the pawnbroker opens the register and counts the cash. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. He takes the cash, then turns to you. Here's the 60 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The rest goes in his pocket. Damn it! I was hoping I'd get all 200. On the other hand, I have 69 real. Nice. The rest is for him. To compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners. Seems fair. The windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Let's not do that. Uh, I'll check my pockets. Access your porn menu. Anything else you're thinking of selling? I could sell this, this shot put ball. A postcard. A handkerchief. Or the gun. I, mm, I don't know if I should pawn these things or if I should hold on to them. Maybe they'll have some bizarre use. What's happening down here? This, this was flashing and I don't know why. Interesting. Um, I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Should, should I try this? Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. He barely even looks at it. Do you know what these tattoos mean? A photic path, counter radiance network, anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. You have absolutely no idea what a photic paths are, but the tattoos on the man are not that. I'd like to sell my clothes? I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. He looks you up and down quickly. And especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. 
Your mother is a necrotic object. I'm fun. Look at me sparkling in the light of the projector. Oh, God, I love the tie so goddamn much. I don't have anything to sell at the moment. Another time, perhaps. Um, do you happen to have any guns? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Damn it! There's my gun! Um, uh, okay, it's a woman who has my gun. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh, God. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive. But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. Uno S, maybe? Truth be told... She was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Maybe. Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. Uh, that is only one explanation. She must be one of my rabid fans. Uh, maybe she's a vigilante, wants to prove what she, she can do our jobs better than we can. Uh, I don't like it either. What if she intends to commit a crime and blame it on the citizen's militia? You're right that she could cast aspersions on the force. We have to find out. Wait, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... We've came here too. That just sounded really, really bad. <laughs> you were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizen's militia. Oh boy. <laughs> and I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. You weren't quiet. Yourself, officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and... That you can't trust yourself with it tonight. And that you need the money. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. Oh, good lord. Uh, How much did I sell it for? Fifteen real. Oh, Jesus. The lieutenant looks from you to Roy and then back to you. It's clear that he hopes this tableau might still turn out to be a bad dream. It's not, though. This has got to be the most. Wow. There's pity there, too. In case you didn't notice. Uh, let's just say nothing. The light swirls in his face and glasses. He doesn't know what to say, either. Any idea where I can find the buyer? My apologies, officer. But I have no idea where she was coming from, or where she went. Crap. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Can I ask if he can aid in our investigation? I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. You know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. He doesn't know anything. Know anything about the Wild Pines representative that's in town? Can't say I'm a huge admirer of Wild Pines. And I can't say I trust any silver-tongued spokesperson of theirs. Fortunately, I have no reason to get involved. What do you have against Wild Pines? What should I have for it? Have you met the rep? No, just... People like that make everyone else see the world somewhat askew. At an angle that is convenient for them. Now, you have more questions, or are we... You ever had any dealings with the union boss? He's been by the shop a couple of times. He gives a lazy half shrug. 
Actually, that's all I've got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colours. Alright, let's leave. Okay, so now we know that my gun is in the hands of some random woman. And uh, that I have the money to go get my room in the Whirling in Rags. So let's go and do that before I end the episode. I expect some sort of debuff for staying up all night, but uh, it doesn't appear to be happening so far. I mean, it's 11 o'clock at night, admittedly. It could be later, I suppose. I'd also like to try that jump again. I may put a point into the jump just so I can retry it. I also have a novice shed, so if I fail, I can heal myself. But let's pay off our can I damages. Help you? How about that money I owe? Yes, have you got it? Yes, I have your money. Well? Here's <laughs> 60 real. Slam the bills down on the counter. I hope you choke on it. Uh, here it is, sorry for the trouble. I'm just going to say here's the money. Uh, my sorry counter is going through the roof. Let let's just go with here's 60 real. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. I have to pay this every day. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. Oh god, that's expensive. I'll take a room here too. He opens his wallet. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? No, no I'm good. Goodbye. Alright, so that finished. Oh god, find money in to pay rent. As long as you don't have a free place to stay, there must be a place we can actually stay for free. Mm. I'm going to unequip this light temporarily as well, because it's it flashing around is driving me nuts. There we go. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't just me that was driving nuts. Um, Say, so how many? where do I see how many points I actually have to level up here? I don't know, I, I, there should be a number, surely. I'm just being silly, and I can't see it. But I think what we're going to end up doing is... Was it Savoir... Yeah, yeah. I'll try it before we go up there, but let's uh, see if we can rest tonight. I wonder if we could sleep in Kuno's shack. This isn't my the room. The door is closed. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Let's go with good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. Okay, let's go. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. He lights a cigarette. Wait, Kim smokes? I don't know why, but I didn't see that coming. I didn't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How did you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. He flicks the ash. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Why right then? The debrief. Yes. It's been a long and eventful day. The music is getting louder and louder. Can I... Can I go into here and lower it down again? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so how do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. Then you shot the body down, which was quite the shot. Aha! <laughs> Damn straight! I'm a sharp shooting cop. On this occasion, I must agree. At any rate, your shot enabled us to perform a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. I still feel like we missed something. 
But it's up to the boys in processing now. We did perform a thorough search of the crime scene. That's great. Now, as for interviews, my list of people to talk to here in Martinez, I mean. He takes a deep drag and looks at the city. That's my forte, and like most cops, I understand how important communication is in our line of work. The initial interview? Yes. Well, we talked to some people. Not always the right people, I'm afraid. Damn. We weren't able to find the union leader, Evrat Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We didn't talk to the Wild Pines rep. We really must do that tomorrow. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? Whoops. Uh, I don't like to waste time, you know. My mind moves fast. The rest has to try and keep up. I'm training for the long distance run. I want to raise money for charity. That's just how we roll here. Let's just say we, my mind moves fast. It's impressive, especially for a man your age and in those hills. He nods thoughtfully, tapping his finger on the cigarette. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. He looks at your snakeskin shoes and smiles suddenly. So what are our powers exactly? The RCM. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Rebachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses, in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Uh-oh. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Why not more than a thousand? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Revachol. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold sleep. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Why? How can you be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. When power calls you, you come. But power itself is a fragile trick of perception. I see, and if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Wait, so if I kill someone while on duty? You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly, by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. He taps on his coat pocket, where he keeps his notes. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government, and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. His gaze is absently fixed on a window below that just went dark. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government founded the RCM. Let's just say it was the citizens. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. The, uh, Moral Intern. What is it? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. So, uh, I really don't know. <laughs> That's how bad it is in here. Okay. They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Deloreans, 
They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. Yeah. What's their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Who was Dolores Day? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. You like the moral intern? Yes, I did, when I was younger. In my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. That's another light motif associated with moralism. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. I have an opinion. Do you? The lieutenant arches his brow, then pulls on his cigarette. It's a slim, white thing in his fingers. Okay, things are bad out there, point of the city. We need them here, giving us the right to police whatever shall. Uh, they've done an awful job here. Have you seen the place? This isn't humanitism. Uh, we are stooges for the world's biggest bourgeois organization, protecting bourgeois rights. Uh, mutter silently. Immigrants, liberal crips, fucking men are turning into women. Uh, on second thought, I don't have an opinion. Forget about it. Let's go with... Have you seen this place? They've done an awful job. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Vigilantes do, do sound bad. Sadly, it is what we already are to the people of Martinez. Most of them, at least. Especially the Union. Vigilantes. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. He looks at the roundabout. Let's say nothing and just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid... You know, it's different in land, in Jamrock, in the G-R-I-H. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. And in Jamrock and the G-R-I-H? We run this city. West of the river is our CM land. He looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument cutting into the night sky. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat as he mounts the horse to head home. Rows of houses on either side hunching over the sidewalks and Precinct 41 with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Petition and Main. The horse neighs the captain nods back. Thanks, kid. He thinks. He's grateful. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least, do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Thanks for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. He puts out the stub of his cigarette and locks the door. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye making you squint. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light 
flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Actually, now that I hear superstar and lord official in a sentence, they sound weird together. Nope, yep, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi. Badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Wait, what's that about a ludicrous fantasy world? Yeah, you know. Beneath it is just heartbreak, a pulmonary tract infection, atherosclerotic disease. This is where you say action and reconceptualize all that. Reinvent it as the world's first celebrity police officer. This is the beginning of your legend. Fuck it, action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. Let's go. We unlock the potential thing here, some kind of superstar. It lowers my logic, apparently. Let's let's worry about that at some other point, shall we? Let's go to our bed. I wonder if they fixed the window. The in the morning. Whoops. Can I close the door from the inside? Bye. Oh, at least he fixed the window. But you could have, you could have at least like I don't know, fixed this place up, tidied it up. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after nine p.m. Roll in. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep doesn't come. You know what? I'm going to end the episode here. We're going to find out where this goes in the next episode because this episode is running long. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.